Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I, I will be pitching Palantir stock with an upside of 30%. So Palantir's business is comprised of two main segments. The government business comes in at about 60% of revenue, over $1 billion uh, with around $11 million per contract, uh, per client. And on the commercial side, about 40% of revenues, $434 million and about $4 million per client. So what exactly does Palantir do? Well, I describe Palantir as the operating system for many of these government institutions that they are partnered with, as well as commercial enterprises. And Palantir provides a full stack solution where you see many of its com so-called competitors here are really focused on thin solutions where Palantir has a full stack solution that provides an offering for all of these component components together. So on the government segment resiliency, as you would imagine, with these caliber of clients and the length of the contracts that they have, there are very high switching costs involved once Palantir gets integrated into a government organization. There are some significant spending tailwinds uh, with NATO defense spending, considering that Palantir only works with the West. This is a tremendous advantage to those looking for a solution like Palantir. And then the growth, the way that I would break it down for the government segment is we have about 110% net dollar retention, meaning internal accounts are growing by 10% annually. And if they get 10% uh, new um, revenue growth each year, which is what I'm expecting and forecasting, that brings us to a CAGR of 20%. On the commercial side of things, the street is really expecting a deceleration in commercial, which I think is very misplaced. I have an informational edge on the customer growth for commercial. On the left side here, you can see the reported figures of new paying clients. And on the right side, you can see new customers on board. Now, this is something the street, frankly, I haven't seen them discuss it at all. I'm not even sure if they know um, it's possible to get this information. But the way that Palantir sets it up is the clients have to log in um, on their site palantirfoundry.com, you can actually see the customers that are listed as are being onboarded to the platform. And there have been some tremendous growth in recent quarters, new clients being added. And I believe this is going to carry forth uh, with the six month sales cycle. Similar profile with the growth, 120% net dollar retention for the commercial side, getting to a CAGR of 30%. For a competitive cost advantage, Palantir offers a land and expand model, meaning it has significant lock-in effects ease of integration uh, and scalability and margins improve over time as you see here from the graphic on the right. They offer a loss leading component up front where they work with organizations and then they expand and scale and the profits go from there. They've saved BP $50 million, Swiss Re $100 million and Tyson Foods $200 million and were ranked number one in AI and ML by Forrester last year. So on the valuation side of things, I've used a 60-40 split between the DCF and the Comco. And for a base case, I'm using a 22% CAGR, 3.5% PGR, WAC 11.6 for a 32% base case. On the Comco, 27% base case. So all of that comes together for a negative 4% bear case, 30 base, and a 47 bull, which includes um, contracts that are pending. Fairly asymmetric uh, upside. So, what are the catalysts? Well, a real commercial rebound. We've seen some deceleration from the commercial side. I'm expecting this to pick back up again. You see CEO confidence right there, indicating an inflection upwards, as well as usage-based pricing that they're working on offering to some of these smaller organizations that are interested in getting on with Palantir. Large NHS contract that I've included in the, the bull case. Uh, it's pending for later this year. It's very significant. And on risks, you know, as was mentioned earlier, AGI is certainly a risk to Palantir's business, but this is a long run concern. Uh, and the consumer concentration for the, some of their major customers uh, is definitely something to be aware of, as well as contract volatility quarter on quarter. So I'll close with this quote from Palantir's CEO. No other company in the world has been focused on this for the last 20 years like we have. We know the products are transformational. There are literally thousands and thousands of users and at this point, countries that depend on our product for their survival. Thank you.